Hello and welcome, Lynx here, and yes, we continue Void of Desire. It would be surprised if we, if we didn't, actually, as always. Anywho, let's see how it goes from now on. Let's see, let's see, let's see. When I opened my eyes again, it was already morning. Day 5. How long have I been sleeping? I got up slowly, my body aging from being on the ground for so many hours. Damn! What did that woman do to me? After I stood up, someone knocked on the door. Kazuya! Are you there? It's Rin. One second, I'll open it now. I walked between whispered moans and wails towards the door. Oh, you finally open! I was worried you haven't shown any sign of life since yesterday. I know, excuse me. Uh, I was very tired and slept late. Oh, you don't need to apologize, it's just... But, um... You seemed a little nervous yesterday and I was worried that something might happen to you. You're fine, right? Right? She extended her hands and took me by them. Yeah. All good, all good. I didn't expect such a fleeting physical contact. She caressed my hands and stopped short, changing her expression slightly. Just slightly. I understand, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. If I push too hard, Kazuya. It's fine, really. Don't worry. In that case, I'll let you rest. I have to go back to my sister for a moment. I hope you enjoy the day. Oh, right, right. Likewise, Rin. She made a small farewell gesture with her hand and quietly left. Well, I really feel exhausted. I think I should start by having some breakfast. When I walked in, Lilith was there waiting. Ooh, was that Jesus' supposed sister? Yes, her name is Rin. Ah, I see. What do you know about her? Uh, fr uh, fr about Rin? Not much, not much. From what I see, she's also a demi-human like Shizu. Uh... You remember what I told you yesterday, right? Darling? What about? My first for blood and revenge! Don't forget that! I'm here for that reason! My heart seeks only the destruction and disgrace of that false piece of meat. You will help me, starting now! Hmm, wait now? I told you I wasn't going to do any of that. Come on! I refuse to harm anyone, human or not. What happened between you and then a mosquito flying by? <laughs> Don't mind that. What happened between you and her is none of my business. I don't care about that. You'll help me whether you like it or not. Her look seemed increasingly angry, so I said try to calm the atmosphere. You say you've been locked up there for a long time, right? That's how it is. How about we do something else first? I'm sure there are a lot of things you want to do now that you're free, right? Something like that? Well, there is not much to do in this place. Walk through the woods, let her decide. Separate us. I mean, let's go on the walk. How about we go for a walk in the woods? We can think about things better if we talk a bit more. A walk, you say? <sighs> okay, let's go. She seemed to think about it for a moment, but agreed. So, let's go. Huh? Yeah. Lilith nodded for a simple movement and we both went outside. I was dazzled by the daylight for a moment. Only to be given some vitality by the warm weather shortly after. Rin didn't seem to be out, neither did her sister. 
just as there was no wind, no birds. Everything was completely silent. As if everything was a stage previously prepared just for us. She came with me outside. Where would like to go? <clears throat> Where would you like to go? Do you think I know the outside world well enough to tell you? I yeah, you you're right. I'm sorry. She definitely seemed annoyed with me. I guess because of my intention to avoid that topic of revenge. Come on, this way. She took, I thought you didn't know. She took me by the hand without warning and began to walk down one of the paths. Oi, wait a bit. Although we followed a different path from the one I used to take, the landscape didn't change too much as expected either. The forest is still a forest no matter where you look at it. Come on, don't be left behind. There is no rush, so you know. It is you who should not be in such a hurry. You're a spoil sport, you know that. <laughs> I grumbled silently at her comment. But... She stopped and co came over to me. That's how I like you. <laughs> she grabbed my face. Something that will start to feel like a habit coming from her. But this time it sent my heartbeat skyrocketing. Now that we are in the tranquility of nature and its silence, I could better appreciate her. Despite her almost demonic appearance, she was quite an attractive and sensual woman. Yeah. Although she also had tentacles surrounding her body, her extravagant way of being made her a uh, certain hypnotic aura. Yeah, that. Uh, I don't know about those tentacles, yeah. Hey, Kazuya! She moved closer to me, being able to feel the warmth of her body in tune. With. Mine. The softness of the skin of her fingers caressed my cheek, running over my face slowly. You think you're in danger by my side, right? Why do you ask? I can see it in your nervousness. I'm not stupid in case you haven't noticed, dear. She parted slightly. But you're not wrong. Every time you're near me, your poor mind struggles to stay sane. <laughs> both of you to both of you to assume I was ever sane. <laughs> to distinguish reality from nightmare. I mean Reality is the nightmare. <laughs> What do you mean? I go crazy to be with you. I don't know. Tell me with your own eyes. With my own? What are you? What? She grabbed me hard by the cheeks and turned my face towards the tree. Tell me, what do you see? Some kind of weird thing that makes ASMR noises. I don't like that sound, but whatever. There, next to the tree, was a kind of amorphous mass of meat. Smiling? Question mark? I could see some tentacles moving from side to side, some exorbitant eyes and even a bit of hair. It was incredibly small, but the simple fact of appreciating something so chaotic Breaking the harmony of the place disturbed me greatly. What? Ah, uh, what is that? Don't you know either? I just told you, ephemeral. It is nothing more than nothing less than the result of being with me. Huh? Your mind gradually becomes corrupted by my influence. Huh? Take a good look at it, Kazuya. I am made of the same faceless flesh as it is. What? Now tell me. Are you scared? Do I terrify you? I stared at her almost unblinkingly puzzled. I was really going crazy, wasn't I? Uh... 
I'm scared of what she might use the tentacles for. Other than that, not really. And that thing over here? Well, come on. Now. Well. No? I'm not scared of or afraid of you. Are you serious? Totally serious. I'm not afraid. I think. I said it, but I know deep down that I was. She looked at me a little surprised. Wow. I was expecting such a brave response. For you can hide your shocked face so easily, little creature. If you're going to be with me by my side, you'll have to get used to these things. Your reality and mine will merge at some point. The abyss is always hungry and never satiates its appetite just like me. At some point, it will consume one of the two. Don't forget that. She placed her hands on both sides of my cheeks. Her tentacles began to wrap around my legs and arms. Okay, that's something I'm scared of, yeah. I'd rather not have that. Um, What are you doing now? I'm sorry. We're just going to extend the right a bit more. What do you mean? She said between laughs. Come on, come with me. Uh, close your weak eyes and let yourself be carried away once again by my voice. What is she doing? Oh, this side is hell, the abyss, the void, my kingdom. Has as many names as I do at this point in existence, don't you think? Ooh, you have your own throne, nice. Now that I think about it, where exactly those tentacles are like connected? Or are they not connected at all and they are just there? Few enter here and are able to leave. Many fewer returns. I mean, you just said that. But you seem to be different. Leaf was sitting on some kind of brown throne. Seeing her in this position, of course, you could believe that Shirley is the queen of this place. Kazuya. I was thinking maybe you and I got off on the wrong foot. So let me clear something up, okay? She got up from the throne and took a few steps towards where I was. I've been watching for quite some time. Oh, okay, that's sure. This is where the... No, they aren't connected to her body, like... Where are those sent? Whatever. I've been watching for quite some time. You are no stranger to me. Many damn humans can feel people's emotions and the data gives us a lot of information about you. If a person is lying... Uh oh. She started walking in circles around me. If you're afraid... Uh oh. If you're happy or not... Ah, this kind of information that we are capable of perceiving also help us understand you better. And also to know how to control you more effectively. Say what? She laughed sarcastically as her hand caressed my shoulder. I don't know if you haven't figured it out yet, Kazuya. But if I really wanted to hurt you, I could have done it from the start. I could have simply seduced you and overridden your will completely. And... Why haven't you? Because it will be more fun to see what you are capable of. I'm selfish and full of insatiable desire. So now I ask you. How far are you willing to go to satisfy 
my appetite. Huh? I wish her scientist as I followed her with my eyes. So... I have no way out of her stupid game. Whether I refuse to obey her is irrelevant, right? I irrelevant, right? She will always get what she was looking for in the end. Or will she? I know that I may not be the strongest or bravest man, but... I refuse to bow down like this. Hmm, but I don't have any appetite to satiate live. I took her hand away from my face. Wow! And that reaction! You heard me! I'm not at all your slave. I'm not going to do everything you want. What? <laughs> she laughed again, this time more exaggeratedly. Oh, sweet and innocent ephemeral. Have you not understand me? Uh, understood. Your destiny is already decided. She took a few steps away approaching the edge of the cliff and dropped her knees to the cold rock floor. She looked at me, then extended her arm as an invitation for me to come with her. I responded and took her hand. We both sat with our legs dangling over the edge of the cliff. She grabbed my hand and never let go of me, almost as if she was careful that I didn't fall. The leaf? Why it seems so important to you to kill Shizu? Is it, uh, is it just simple spike towards her? You tell me, Kazuya. She looked at me and changed her usual tone for a more serious one. What would you do? How would you feel if someone or other people rejected you by your own nature? Wouldn't you think it's unfair that for this reason you're locked up forever in a horrible place? Would you feel resentment towards the person who judged you and condemned you with her own hands? Tell me, Kazuya. Don't you think I have a legitimate right to feel this way? Uh, maybe. You have a point? Just maybe? Just maybe? Look at the horizon, Kazuya. Fix your gaze straight ahead. What do you see? I see... Mountains, cracks, red rivers. What if you look up? A uh, crimson sky of black clouds. Now look down. What are your feet walking now, on now? Mm, under my feet there is nothing, just... A big void, right? You're dangling into the abyss. You could fall at any moment. You could lose your balance and lose everything in seconds. How would that make you feel? I guess deeply distressed. I've been in that state for longer than I can remember. Because I, long ago, fell into that pit of darkness and despair. And I don't mean the one under our feet. She pondered her finger at my chest. I'm talking about the one that is right in the heart. Even Icarus would die next to his wings for trying to escape from sad destiny. Yeah. Lilith always seemed to be an outgoing woman who doesn't care about anything. A cluster of selfish emotions and no empathy. But now. It seemed that her words were loaded with a past full of pain. I was aware that she was not an angel full of goodness. But I was beginning to think that she was not a monster without feelings either. Yeah... Despite everything, she suffered for things beyond her own control. That piqued my curiosity. My curiosity to know more about her. Kazuya. Yes? A part of me calls for she's blood like an elixir to soothe my hatred. But I myself know that the pain and scars of the heart don't heal that easily. If I have brought you here, it's because I want to give you the opportunity to decide the wave of the scale. Will my first end when her blood runs down my lips? Or is it 
Already too late to save a monster. Can I redeem myself or not? I could have you under my yoke and have you do everything for me, but I won't. I want to wait little for a fool, like a fool, for someone to save me too. That's why. She put her hand on my back. Now it's up to you to decide. Will you help me or not? Which path would you take in my place? Look me in the eyes and tell me what they are shouting. I'll leave you alone for now, but I'll be back for you. And you'll have to do something about it. Because you, like me, as much as you want to run away, you're one step away from falling. As I did. See you, little Kazuya. Where? She pushed me forward from low and I started to fall towards the sharp ground. I closed my eyes in panic as I felt my body falling uncontrollably. But, nothing happened. I woke up lying on one of the sofas in my cabin. Day 6. Ah, uh, if it wasn't the first time, I'd think I had another nightmare. I got up and sat from, up from the comfort of the sofa. Okay. And now. Am I really involved in something like this against my will? Should I decide? What will happen to a poor girl, or on the other hand, the fate of a monster? At what point did everything turn into such a chaotic and sticky situation? I believe to think that coming here was a terrible mistake on my part. The worst part is... Lilith is partially right. My mental condition is on the brink of collapse, and I'm sick of it. I don't want to have blood on my hands. But, I rested my head on the backrest. What am I supposed to do then? Do I help her or do I try to stop this whole thing? Whatever I do, I know what can happen or what is better. I feel so deeply exhausted that I can hardly think clearly. <sighs> I head to the main room without stopping thinking. If I help her, a supposedly innocent girl may die. And if I don't help her, maybe the result will be the same, but I will send up badly. On the other hand, maybe I can try to reason with her that revenge doesn't always end well. What should I do? I kinda would like to help Lilith. While at the same time not allowing her to take vengeance. Let's go with that. The first option is this. I I want to help Lilith come to her senses. Yeah. I could understand her need for that, but I can't let someone end up dead if I can help it. Yes! I decided to wait until the night again, so I could summon her and talk to her once more. As darkness closed in on the room, I wa went for the knife from the kitchen. This time I didn't think too much about it and pierced my finger until a few drops of blood spurted from it. Lilith! I want to talk with you. I threw said drops towards the darkest place that I could see in the gloom. I closed my eyes and called her back. Lilith? I want to talk with you. Now! I could begin to distinguish her silhouette from the rest of the environment. Kazuya, where are you calling me? Have you finally made the decision to help me? Yes, I have. But not in the way you asked. Hey, what do you mean, Kazuya? I'm saying that I will help you, but I will not sacrifice anyone's life for the desire of revenge. <sighs> and do you think I'm going to accept something like that so easily? What are you offering in, in return, huh? I... Offer my hand to help you! As long as it's nothing that would harm another person or any human. 
I told you that my nature makes me have an insatiable thirst. Are you short on memory? Do you listen to me when I speak to you? She approached me with an angry tone. Tell me. Are you really willing to keep a promise like that? I know your time here is finite. What will you do once you leave this place? Don't think I could wait and seduce another adwari into doing my bidding? I mean, I don't know. But I'll think about that when the time comes. I want to help you, but I also want to help others. That's why I called you. I want to save you. Uh, let's check it out then. She wrapped her slender arms around my neck. Her soft skin caressed the tip of my lips. Hey, Kazuya. Look at me. Prove yourself to me. When I looked into her eyes, I began to feel slight weariness. How do I know you will keep your promise? Because I... I'll do it. And this tiredness slowly turned into... You look tired, are you sleepy? She hugged me tight. Would you like to sleep while I take care of you? What are you... Trying? I? Didn't I tell? I see. So this is that famous hypnosis. You can sleep with me, Kazuya. Just close your eyes and I tell care of everything. Don't be afraid, just do it. No. If I do that, I'll fall under her influence. But it's so tempting. Keep away. No, I don't need to rest. Stop trying to control me. She took my face in both hands. Are you sure, dear? You know that I could give you everything. From the most peaceful rest to the most addictive pleasure. And the only thing I ask of you in return is that you follow what my voice tells you. I know, it's a lie, but still... Oh. Don't listen to what she says, no! You're not going to convince me, Lilith. For once. This time I won't give in. I've made up my mind. I have made the decision to save you. Save me? Why do you think that? It was you who told me. To look into your eyes and respond to what they scream. That is why I chose to save you. But why would you do such a thing? Have you gone like completely insane? You already know that what my true nature is and yet you... That does matter now. I want to save both you. Both you and Shizu. I know you can put instinct aside because now... I'll be the one to help you. Will you help me? And how do you plan to do that, huh? I took her hand. Because I'll be with you. She looked at me with a certain expression of disbelief and distrust in my word. I doubt you can keep a promise like that. What will happen when you have to leave this place tomorrow? Haven't you thought about that? I'm aware of that, but it doesn't matter. I know I'll be able to make the right decision when the time comes. But until then I must first convince you not to hurt anyone else. And what will you gain from all of this? Perhaps I'm also a selfish being like you, and having you here with me is my wish. <laughs> she laughed for the first time before me sincerely. Oh, Kazuya. Maybe and just maybe. Maybe I'll have even more interest in you now. You win. I'll give you a chance to prove what you say. And if it's true... She reached out and wrapped her tentacles around me. If you keep your promise, you and I may become quiet close. Yeah. Yeah. Hearing her suggestive tone so close to my ear triggered my heartbeat. But but don't try to hypnotize me again. Oh, not even a little bit. Zero. Okay, okay. 
Hey, little one. It's getting late, so I have an idea. She released me and took a few steps back. Come here. She extended her arm and invited Mimi to come closer to her. What do you have in mind? This. What are you doing? Fear not, my little ephemeral. I'm not going to do anything that you don't want to. I just thought that this way we'd be more comfortable together. Lilith pushed me to the ground and wrapped her tentacles around me. She perched on top of me, staring and without taking her eyes off of me. You won't try to seduce me again, right? Oh, honey. Of course not. I just want to be like this with you, while we talk a little more. Having lived so close for so long, I was beginning to feel odd. As if everything around me was becoming more and more subtle. Or rather, I felt that everything that surrounded Lilith was special. Unique. Oneric. I actually don't know that word. What's wrong, Kazuya? You seem focused or something, on something. Sorry, sorry. I was just watching you. Where are you watching me? And what do your eyes see? Inevitably, I swallowed nervously, like... Ooh. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Are you embarrassed to answer that question? Of course not. Why should I be ashamed? Well, I already know how incredibly beautiful and seductive I am. It's normal that your first reaction is to gasp. Tell me, Kazuya. Do you like me? Whoa. He does, let's face it. Yes, I like you. Oh, what a manly response. I'd expect you to admit it so soon. She answered me between laughter and caresses on my cheek. Hey, my little Kazuya. She pressed my face against her chest in a comforting hug. Is there anything you'd like to know about me? Now that we have this quiet time alone, would you like to ask me anything? Well, now that you mention it... Whoa, that's a lot of questions. Tell me more about you. I would know more about you, your past, who you were, whatever. Oh, really? Hmm... Where do I start? Because do you really want to know? Sure, I want to know you in depth. Well... To cut a long story short... In the beginning I was human too. Huh? Of I wasn't a complete human. When I was born, my mother was killed by selfish people who wanted to abuse her. Huh? I was too young to be of any use, so they left me lying under a tree trunk. Huh? Perhaps I had such a phobia of insects at that time in my existence. When I died, all the negative emotions of the place along with my mother's blood and all that accumulation of things. They made me reborn. Of, of course. With the way you see me now. Wow. And no, even you had such a past. Oh dear. I don't need your words, Comfort. Do you know how long ago all that happened? I'm an immortal being. As immortal as insatiable. Don't forget it. And so is my first for revenge. I was the end of those people's lives after having some fun. Just like I wanted to end Jesus too. Until I promise to think again. Ha! Interesting. Uh, let's talk about something. I never thought of getting engaged to anyone, but if it's you, I can make an exception. Ha! Huh? Well, what do you mean? She whispered in my ear. I think you know what I'm. Talking about my little one. To be only yours. Are you talking about being a couple? If you want to put it that way, that's fine. 
or vice it more as you belonging to me and I to you? Well, being a couple basically. Kind of. You owe me absolute devotion, loyalty, right? Yeah. Will it trigger... Oh, it's a different one. What's your favorite color? My favorite color? It might seem like I love red, but the color I like is purple. It seems to me such a spiritual and hidden color. Okay. What did you used to do in the Abyss? Uh, when you were locked up in the void. Hell or whatever you want to call it. <sighs> what do you think I could do? I walked through its barren deserts. I bathed in its rivers and lakes of red water. I rested on the cliffs while I felt the breeze. I think I mentioned to you, but there were other creatures besides me as well. They're not really dire loving creatures for you know. Most ignore each other. Ignore may attack or in on instinct. In that place the time doesn't run. And if it does, it's very slowly or very quickly. Due to my own nature and perhaps a curse, I have always had the need to quench my thirst. My thirst for knowledge, power and enjoyment. But being there, I couldn't do anything at all. In fact, and to be honest with you, besides getting revenge on whoever punished me in such a cruel way, something I always wanted was to have a companion. A companion, you say? Yes, doesn't that make sense to you? I think humans have a very good phrase for what I want to say. Everything tastes better when you share it with someone else. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I... I said this before when any of the games mentioned alcohol. Uh, I dislike the taste of it when I'm alone. That's why I don't drink alone. Uh, but if I drink it with someone... Dude... This is good. This is nice. It's completely different. I don't know why. Wow, 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 wow. I'm curious to check the veracity of those words. She looked at me with a certain mischief. Hehe. <laughs> Are you talking about me? Who else would I refer to? I'm very interested in you. I've already told you. I lowered my gaze trying to hide my nervousness. Let's talk about something. Uh, what do you like to do in your free time? You can ask me anything about existence you want to know what I do with my free time. You are definitely someone very interesting sometimes. Uh... She thought for a moment. I like to collect skulls that I keep near my throne. Vials of blood. Experiences that lead me to ecstasy too, among other things. Maybe... I also want to collect you for myself. She smiled as she poked her index finger into my cheek playfully. Dude, let's ask some more questions. Uh, is there anything you can tell me about the Abyss? One of the last things I heard was that... There was another creature lurking beside me. It could be any corner under any stone. No one has seen it, but they have heard it as a secret whisper that no one wants to mention. Of all, some dare to call her by her name. And? What's her name? Rentera. No, it doesn't ring a bell. Wait, was that so? Uh. She pressed finger her chin as she considered her response. Carletta? Re no, Rebecca! Wait, what? Wait, what? No way. Are you being serious right now? What? No, Freaking way, man. Rebecca is in the abyss? By the way, we pre played Dear Rebecca just before 
getting him to Void of Desire, so... Well, that pathetic name does matter. Wow. Surely in a few weeks no one will remember that she exists. Is there something you hate? I can't stand salt. What? Beings of my kind cannot touch salt, since it is an earthly element that takes us away from this place. If I touched or consumed large amounts of salt, I would surely lose my shape. And could you come back? I've never checked, so I can't tell you. While I was in the bus during all, abyss during all this time, I've seen different creatures from out of hatred, jealousy, lust, and so on. Sometimes you'd be surprised at the shape of a monster I can take. I also learned that you guys aren't the different from those you point fingers at. Yeah. And is there one that caught your attention or surprised you the most? Now that you mention it. Yeah. Long ago, a woman's resentment took shape. One day she surfaced and I never heard from her again. But one day the resentment grew stronger in her. From what I could see, that woman had offspring, specifically a daughter. Knowing that she might hurt her, she decided to shut her out and come back here. Oh. I wonder if this is about Coco. From time to time, I have seen her roam the crimson desert while she scratched the sand with her long and sharp fingers. This is about Coco, what the heck? <laughs> or her mother. Her mother, probably. If you could spend more time away, would you like to accompany somewhere on a trip? Oh, see what else lies beyond this forest and the gloom of the abyss? Of course I want to go. Wait, are you coming too? I mean, sure, that's why I told you that. Then I'll think about it. She stuck out her tongue mockingly. Don't be silly, obviously I want to go and leave something like that with you. Dude, we are going to continue talking like that for like next half an hour or... Oh, okay, we've been through salt already. So I guess we hit the end in the end. That's it. I think that's all for now. Then it's my turn to meet you. I mean not your tiredness for little one. So I'll just ask you something. What do you want to ask me? What will you do tomorrow? Because you've forgotten tomorrow is your last day in these cabins. I know, and you're right. For you, the problem will be that I leave, right? Exactly. If you've promised to stay by my side, that's the least I expect you to do. Then... I mean, she could come with us to the city, I guess. <sighs> sure. How about if I stay here with you? <laughs> she laughed uncontrollably. Are you aware of what you are saying? You would lose your job and your home to stay with a woman you just met? Yeah, that sounds crazy. You sure are wackier than I thought. But I like it. Would I do something like that for someone I fell for? Yes. Fear not anyway. You can maintain on your next move tonight. Which, by the way, I think it's time to let you get some sleep. You're right. What will you do? I'll go back to my warm home to rest for a while too. But first I'll go and talk with Rin. I'll see you tomorrow. You can't escape from me. I don't want to run away either. She flashed a slight smile of happiness upon hearing me say that. So rest and think about the decision you had to make. She lowered her face. Her hair cursed my cheeks, her tentacles tightened around me for a few seconds and her lips kissed my forehead. Good night, my favorite ephemeral. She got up and disappeared into the darkness. I also got up and went straight to bed. I lay not thinking about everything she said to me. Lilith. My whole day really did go off the track, huh? I closed my eyes and almost without realizing it, I fell asleep. And decided.
that it is time to end the episode. We'll continue tomorrow, that's right, this will be, I guess, in three parts in the end. If not more, who knows. Anywho, uh, the game link in the description, spiritual, go support the dev, check out other games of, of the dev as well, obviously. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, consider liking it, subscribe if you're new around, that's always super appreciated and so on. Mm. Twitch with Instagram in the description as well, if you're into that stuff. And yeah, hope you all have a wonderful day, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow too. Bye-bye.